everybody. Welcome to I'll Just Let Myself In with Lish Speaks, the podcast where we talk about letting ourselves in and not waiting for anybody to give us a right to our God-given gifts and talents. Listen, this week I have a guest who I love, who really uh, does so much that we had to call this episode into everything ladies and gentlemen give it up for singer songwriter sneakerhead host content creator and so many other things miss tiana denise y'all give it up what's up thanks for being here of course listen um he was gonna make it happen yes he was gonna make it happen he's gonna make it happen (laughs) tiana does so much she travels so much she moves and shakes so literally when I, the, the last time I was with her, I was like, what you doing? <laughs> like, you know, let's you make this happen. Me. And so we did make it happen. And I'm super excited to have you here because I think our audience really will connect to the story of a woman who does so many things so well. Um, and I feel like you don't compromise the integrity of how you do one thing for the other, which mm. I need help trying to figure that out. <laughs> So I'm definitely excited to get to talk to you. But before we get started, you already know we have a segment here and I'll just let myself in called What I'm Stepping In. And it's where we talk about our favorite sneakers that we have on and what we love about them and why we're stepping in them today. So for me, I am actually stepping in a custom made sneaker. I have called it the Lish Fetty Air Force One. (laughs) Uh, I went to an event recently with Kicks and Fro. Shout out to Kicks and Fro's where we were able to custom design our own sneaker at Soul Play, the Decatur location here in Atlanta. Shout out to Soul Play. Um, And it was a great time. We got together. We all got uh, a pair of Air Force Ones that we were able to paint or uh, place patches on or just do really cool stuff to. Um, And I decided in true list fashion that I would kind of cut up different fabrics and place them all around the sneaker. Y'all know I love cool G's and colorful stuff and wovens and all type of knits. And so um, these sneakers I love. They're lots of fun. Uh, They look like a party. And so these are the Lish Fetty (laughs) Air Force Ones. But guys, you know, Air Force Ones are a classic sneaker. Um, You know, something that in the hood growing up we call Uptowns in New York. Uh, and so, as I always tell you, if you like them, go get you some. You can't get these, but you can get some Air Force Ones. <laughs> All right, Tiana, tell people about what you're stepping in. Today, so I have a love for Vimeros. Yes. She Vimeros, has the widest Vimeros collection it's that so I know. so sad, but I love them <laughs> so much. And today, I have them on my Vimeros 5, made by Japan. And I want to say they didn't have a huge uh, amount that were made. Mm-hmm. I want to say that, and I could be wrong if I'm wrong. Don't judge me. But I really like them because you've got the exaggerated swoosh on them and the different like tabs throughout the shoe, which is giving a little bit of off white. Um, and the mesh, it's just such a great shoe. And I've been really into neutrals lately. Mm. So it's a good neutral. I was trying to figure out what to wear today. And of course I was struggling and, and running late. I can't tell you. I was struggling good. and running late, which is normal for me. But I threw these shorts on and I was like, <laughs> that's it i was like cool we good all right we're going outside let's yeah. go so um anytime you catch me i'm probably gonna have on of a marrow yeah. yeah dope 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 so that's what we're stepping in and if you like them go get you some all right so tiana um you know like i said earlier you are a singer songwriter you do background vocals as well or have done you're a sneakerhead you host um you do content um and all sorts of other things, you know, how do I know too much? (laughs) How do you navigate um, living in those worlds and kind of like knowing when to knowing when to push one thing and not the other, right? Like you have a show that you host and you can't be on that show necessarily talking about your music, although it might feel beneficial if you could. So how do you navigate keeping the world separate? That's a great question because I don't know. Mm. And honestly, I really just, I just let God navigate that because every time I try to navigate some stuff, lately it's not been working out for me. So I'm like, <laughs> let me just go ahead and let the mess do it because I'm <laughs> clearly not doing it. But what I, what I find is that there's always room to mm-hmm. plug things in. You just yeah. have to read the room mm. and, and know when it makes sense. Yep. Like one thing I'm not going to do is I'm not going to be like opportunistic in the fact yes. like, Hey, excuse me. Um, you know, I, I do, I do music as well. Like I don't, 
I like things to be just natural, natural. and organic. Yeah. And I find that when I move like that, things just naturally make space for all the things that I do. Yeah. And a lot of times people already kind of have an idea mm -hmm. that I do a lot of stuff and yeah. they kind of already have an idea of what I do. So they yeah. ask me about it. Mm -hmm. So it's more of an organic conversation. So yeah. I try not to push the envelope yeah. like that. Yeah. Cause it kind of turns people off. It does do turn that. people off. I always tell yeah. people, you know, when you come at anyone in a, in a space of need, yeah. even people who love you are a little bit, repulsed. like what you about to ask me for, you Listen. know, like, and so, I try to really uh, do the same thing, um, you know, not be needy, uh, not be opportunistic. That's so I'm glad you said that because so many people in this space are opportunist in the name of networking. Yeah. You're they, not networking because you, you're not giving anything. Yeah. Networking is yeah. meeting, talking, connecting for mutual benefit. Yep. But when you're in a room just to take. You're siphoning. That's yeah, not networking. That's not the same. And so um, I, I really love that you said that because being opportunistic really will rob you of, of opportunities. And what I find, too, is if I focus on the one thing I would like a person to leave a conversation with me knowing, right? So sometimes that's nothing, that has nothing to do with anything that I do. Yeah. But sometimes it does, right? Like you meet a person, let's say I meet somebody and I would like them to be on my podcast. Well, it's of no help to me if they leave a conversation with me not knowing that I have a podcast, yeah, right? Exactly. So I will make sure that in that conversation, I let them know that, hey, this I have a podcast, this is what I do, but I make sure that the full conversation is not centered around that. Yeah. And I make sure that they don't leave feeling any pressure to do anything. Exactly. This is just information, and I would love to have you if you're interested. Yep. Um, and I find that that works. And then a lot of times when people like you, I think it's cool for them to like then go on your social media or go on your website and be like, oh, and she does all these other things too? Yeah. I actually like that. Me I feel too. like it's a little like yeah. gift. It so that, actually happens to me. Know? So I met somebody, uh, they're a prominent person in the industry, mm -hmm. and I met them on some sneaker stuff. Mm -hmm. And they went onto my page and they emailed me, like they DM'd me later on and they were just like, why you ain't telling me to do music? Yeah. And I'm like, we wasn't, we wasn't we talking thing. about this. Like, <laughs> yeah. I do that too. And, yeah. they were, and they asked me for my music. Yeah. So I think it makes it a more organic conversation. And then also I'm really big on like breadcrumbing mm. and giving people like a, a reason to come back. Mm. You know what I mean? Like something yeah. else to talk about, something else. Especially like if you like the conversation yeah. you're having with somebody, I never want it to seem like I just want something from you. Like you said earlier, like that's one of those things when you get the text message that's like a WID yeah. or I need a favor, yeah. you automatically like, yeah. nah. And you can love this person down your yes. sister your brother your best friend Man, you it's just a them. natural reaction to have a yeah. little hesitancy like, when you, you feel nice? needed yeah you know what i mean and so and then you, uh, what i like to say is imagine celebrities or people who are prominent business people they get that non-stop exactly. people non-stop needing yeah. them or wanting them to make their lives better so i really try not to approach people with that with that pressure with that attitude yeah. even with that mindset mm -hmm. um and i find that it's helpful you know again having you want to be wise in your interactions. Yeah. You know what I mean? It doesn't help anybody not to know what you're too... Being too humble will have you underpaid and underbooked. True. But <laughs> you also do... Very true. Just, <laughs> yeah, have that wisdom there. So let's talk about your... your first of all, you have a ridiculous sneaker collection. <laughs> like, amazing sneaker <laughs> collection. Um, and I think you're somebody who's purposeful in your kicks. Um, I think over the last... Let me be generous. Probably, let's say eight to ten years we've seen a crazy rise in uh sneaker heads and sneaker enthusiasts but i also feel like a lot of people just by the hype um a lot of people and this is no shade to anybody but a lot of people just have the means so yeah. every sneaker that come out they can just yeah. buy the resale because whatever i Why got not? it yeah and so i i feel like the true collector the person who would you know camp out is kind of gone Either we've gotten older or, yeah, you know, it's different. And I, it's different. And so as you've seen the evolution of the sneakerhead, as we've seen women be more represented in this in this field, how does it feel to be, I think, one of the front runners in women in sneakers? Well, you, you, you don't get some of the opportunities that you've gotten if you aren't <laughs> recognized yeah. in the community. I'm glad you're humble. I'll but take I'll take it. I'm going to take it. I'm getting better at that. Yes, just, I just but, tell people I'll take it. Yes. Thank you. Thank but you. I would call you a front runner 
of what certain that. brands call your front runner. I will take it. I will take that. And so how that does it feel? To, to, I, yeah, you earned that. It's crazy. It yeah. It's crazy. Because honestly, I was thinking about it on my way here. I was just like, man, like five, six years ago, I was crying about not getting opportunities and not understanding why and being like, I'm dope. I think I'm dope. Am I dope? God, like... <laughs> What the, what the problem is <laughs> like and then to 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 be there and then fast forward to now yeah. and i'm in a place where i have gotten a whole lot more opportunities and it's just like wow okay yeah. <laughs> sheesh <laughs> but and for you to say that i'm that you consider me as one of the front runners i'm just like wow that's crazy yeah i'm so thankful man like and there's so many there's so many dope women like mm-hmm. your collection is mm-hmm. crazy my collection i feel it. like my collection is cool <laughs> but you know what i also feel like my i don't get a, i didn't start getting into sneakers because that's what everybody liked i just buy what i like yeah and sometimes you it's definitely a high do. shoe and sometimes it's not. Yeah, same same with me. You know what I mean? Like, sometimes we write on the same, mm-hmm. you know, playing field. I mm-hmm. needed those Travis's. Mm-hmm. I wanted right. them. What am I going to wear them? I don't know. Yeah. I need them. We'll figure it out. Right. Like, the fi- the fit will find me. But the shoe I need. The fit will find me. Okay? I told you I was at Rainbow today. Absolutely. All the way, yeah. The so, the fit will find me. me. I need the shoes first. Because yes. sometimes it's harder to get the shoes than the fit. Yeah, it's always you know? hard to get the shoes. It's always. Okay? But <laughs> yeah. when you plus size, it's hard to get the oh, shoes, too. Oh, my. Forget it. it. Everything's uh. hard. When, when you're over a size 10, it's, it's difficult oh, for Oh, Lord. And don't be tall. Yeah. Too. Oh, see, I'm short. <laughs> but it's just hard. Add that in there, too. And it's just yeah. like, okay, we, we move the mountains outside. Yeah. So, <laughs> all right, cool. But I, I just, I, I find it being able to just buy what I like mm-hmm. and just like and just loving what I do yeah. and trying to be, not trying, but being as authentic as I am. Like, mm-hmm. when you meet me on the show if you Mm -hmm. meet me in person if you meet me at a show wherever i'm the same person yeah and and that's important to me that people get the same feeling wherever they find me at yeah and that is why people rock with me and i'm so thankful for that because it could be the other way yeah because you know this stuff is fleeting yeah and i'm taking every opportunity that i can to to put on for the next Mm -hmm. because we don't and and my therapist said this the other day come on therapy come on therapy listen (laughs) shout out to my therapist shout out to therapy oh my g (laughs) but she said we don't do it for ourselves like Mm. we don't continue on and push on for ourselves we do it for the person behind yeah. you so that they keep going and mm-hmm. they don't stop yeah so when she said that to me it was like a light bulb went off in my head and i was like dang that makes a whole lot of sense yeah like yeah we push on for ourselves because we have goals and aspirations mm-hmm. and things but it's really to help the next generation like if those other women like you know like jazzy like um so many other women before mm-hmm. us mm-hmm. didn't put on for us. Mm-hmm. Wouldn't for, be here. Uh, we wouldn't be here if they didn't go hard. So definitely shouts out to them for paving yeah. the way for, for us. Yeah. Speaking of the next generation, you just did an event with young girls. Yes. Um, helping them to design sneakers and, and, and kind of like customize. So tell us a little bit about that event and just your affiliation there. Sure. I'm actually going to start from the beginning. Okay. Yeah. So um, I developed a non-for-profit organization called tough diamonds back Mm -hmm. in 2012 and when i started it i was in a place where i was i was out with these guys right some of my homies at the time and i felt super duper like not feeling myself like Mm. i felt super unconfident Mm. and i hated that feeling i hated it and i was like why do we always as women always talk about the things that we hate about ourselves like oh i hate my thighs oh Oh, my god my nose blah blah blah. we never talk about things we love yeah and I decided to try to change that narrative, not just for myself, because I know I'm not the only woman that feels mm-hmm. that way. So I created Tough Diamonds as a way to celebrate that in other women and in ourselves. Yeah. So I started that, um, I started working with Girls Inc. back then in 2013 mm-hmm. uh, in New York City and here in Atlanta. I did my first event here in Atlanta and I had just, I was still living in New York at the time. So yeah. I flew in to, wow. to do some things and I made this as a part of my stop. Mm-hmm. And I had so much fun with them. And when I moved to Atlanta, I took some time to get my life together. And then I reached back out to Girls Inc. And I started doing like a bi-weekly, bi-weekly uh, mentorship like okay. program. Yeah. COVID, life, everything, my travel, all, everything kind of went from here to here. Mm. And so I had to take some time off from that. And when I started working with Soul Play and Soul Play Her and being part of the collective, yeah. shout out to the shout collective. To the collective. <laughs> so when I started doing that, um, 
the ladies were like, we want to give back. We want to do some give back stuff. And I was like, hey, this is a perfect opportunity. I've been really trying to get back in Mm -hmm. because they've had some organizational changes within Girls Inc. Mm -hmm. So I've been really trying to get back in with them. And shout out to my assistant, Naj, because she really spearheaded that and trying to get us back in. Come on, teamwork, making this Teamwork, yo, all day. Like, she was really, I was like, Naj, I need to find these people. I don't have the time to do it. She was like, I'm I'm on it. Yeah. She helped with that. We got back in and we started doing the workshops with the girls. Uh, we created a, a fit. We created the story around yeah. the shoe. And the kids, they, the girls, they love it. And Girls Inc., we actually had a meeting with the CEO. Nice. They love what we're doing over there. It. And there's, there's more things coming yeah. with that. And it's just so exciting because I was able to bring back that something that I love so much because I, yeah. I absolutely love being able to talk to these young girls yeah. and give them something yeah. and, and be a mentor to them. Like uh, in the meeting they asked us, they were like, so, you know, we're looking for mentors that want to start from the bottom and go all the way up until like they're 23. Yeah. I was like, put me in. Yeah. I do it. Now don't, don't, don't do everything I do. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> there's a couple things. I'll tell you what to do and what not to do. Don't be like me uh, in a lot of ways. But, you know. <laughs> No, I love that. I work with young women as well, and I try to steer them away from all the mistakes I made and toward right. all the good decisions that I made. Right. So I, I on, totally come understand. On right. Come on this way. Come on this way. No, I totally get that. Uh, and so you also spoke about the Soul Play Her Collective that you're a part of. So that's another thing that you do. Yeah. So we got a nonprofit. We host a show. We are a part of the collective of Soul Play. We're a female sneakerhead. We're one of the dopest sneakerheads in Atlanta, period. Um, let's talk about the Soul Play Her Collective. I have had um, Liv here. Uh, I'm going to work through each member of the collective Listen, all the time. Make your way. So, uh, so all you of us are, are second, dope in yes. our own Oh, my goodness. Right. Each, yeah. each one of you. So you are the second member of the Soul Play Her Collective here. Um, really briefly, tell us what Soul Play Her Collective is and just kind of what it means to you to be a part of that group. What you, what, what part you represent in that group. Okay, for yeah. sure. Uh, so Soul Play, uh, so TJ and the team over there, they really support women yes. and sneakers. And they really wanted to do something for the women mm-hmm. and show their appreciation for all of our efforts that we do in the community yep. and what we do just in general, just being who we are. And so they created, they work with, I had started with them for a while. Then, of course, life busy and then Liv came in and Liv took it from like zero to a hundred shout out she's to Liv just dope. like just living shout out girl. man she is so fire man and, and when she came to me she was like we're building this collective and I want you to be a part of it I was like say less let's do yeah. it so really what what it is it is a, a group of women that come together to enhance the women's sneakerhead community mm-hmm. here in Atlanta and abroad and we support all women we support all sneaker yep. women who are into sneakers just joining veterans all the above and we do events yep. we do you know we help women get sneakers we give back to the community so my my part in that is being you know being a steward yep. like however I'm needed I'm there but also helping with the community advancement as well too mm-hmm. so partnering with tough diamonds and soul play her yeah. is a huge initiative for yeah. me but uh, just wherever I'm needed you know what I mean if yeah. it's just there to support if yeah. it's just big in the background to get some background for something like I'm, I'm there for that yeah 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 no I love it and guys please follow soul play her yeah. on social media join their close friends I'm really giving it giving away because the more y'all join, the less chances yeah. I'll get to win. But yeah. <laughs> if you join the close friends, yeah, the you close will, friends is where you all will be down. surprised at some of the opportunities yeah. you will get. And sure. um, like she said, um, Soul Play Her really does, Soul Play in general, but Soul Play Her specifically really does prioritize women getting women's releases. So many times women, you know, we get releases, but the colorway is so fire that men Everybody just kind of eat them up. And, and I'm so, not mad at it. I'm not it. mad at it because we, we take this niggas yeah, too. Yeah, I get it. It is nice to be able to have first dibs on yeah. getting women's releases, and I think Soulplay definitely does prioritize that. Um, so another question I wanted to ask you: with your music, right? You have worked with um, some of the toughest guys in the game. Like you always with some gangsters. Like if you go all day, if you go on social media, you be like, "Dang, you 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 strapped up, ain't you?" Like. <laughs> I'm crying. <laughs> I don't want to mess with the you. Um, so you, you know, you, and I'll let you name who you want to name. But you work with some some pretty tough guys, and you bring the the chill to the music. You bring the soul to the music. 
Um, how has that crowd influenced your music? Because you do R and B, yeah. But these are like gangster rappers. I mean, we from the day, we from the streets, yeah. dog. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Don't mess with me, feel me. But I mean, Griselda, that's family. Yeah. That is my family. I love those guys. I love, like, absolutely. I'm so proud of all of the things that they've been able to achieve yeah. in such a short amount of time, too. And I mean, every time Wes drops a shirt, I'm like, um, you, yeah. You know, <laughs> Where am I at? Yeah. So I have to get online and get it just like everyone else. Yeah. That's um, another misconception because people be thinking that we be getting stuff for free and we be d- 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 listen. Let me, we be let me paying for our stuff. I, I stand in line <laughs> when it comes to sneakers. I be entering the raffles. I be on sneakers. I'm taking hell like everybody else. Yeah. Like sometimes I get blessed and I'm yeah. thankful for that. Like I've gotten to a point now where I get blessed from time to time and that's great. But sometimes if something I really want, I'm standing, I'm in the trenches like everybody else. Like when it comes to some of these Griselda releases, I miss out yeah. and I have to make a call. Like, so you don't have an extra. <laughs> you ain't got nothing in the back. You ain't got nothing in the back. <laughs> I take whatever size. I'll just, it'll be a t-shirt that'll just look like a bra. That's yeah. fine. But I need it. You know what I mean? Like I need that. But um, they're just amazing. Yeah. And it's so funny because when people meet me, they're like, you're so not street but then i'm talking about some crazy like wes is having me say some crazy stuff and i'm like you want me to say that he's like yeah t say that and i'm like all right let's do it like no, you're so soft yes not as soft in a way that you like you know but i get what you mean like, like and then my warm. voice yeah. yeah and then my voice is very like yeah. high pitched and warm person. man and then i'm up here talking about i'm gonna shoot you <laughs> to play with me and it has it has definitely influenced my music okay i, I have me and my team really kind of coined our own, we're, we're building our own genre. Mm-hmm. Because in the underground hip hop space, there really is nobody that does what I do. Mm-hmm. Nobody that's talking this gangsta stuff mm-hmm. and singing it. Mm-hmm. Like I'm like literally a female Nate dog. Like yeah. that's no, literally truly. like <laughs> what I've become. And it's, it's giving Gunica mixed it's with so much fun, Mary though. Jane. <laughs> yes. <laughs> It's like a little doja, a little, yeah, a little, little, little Janae, sprinkle, little, little sprinkle, sprinkle of it, and, and a lot of hood stuff and a lot of street <laughs> things. And it's just it's so funny to me, and I'm yeah. just like, all right, cool. Yeah. Like I remember one time I was when we when I was recording Mask and Glove, and Q, who is my creative director mm-hmm. and my writer, mm-hmm. he was like, I want you to say the B word, and I was like, I don't want to call myself. <laughs> he was like, you got to be from the streets, and I'm like, but I gotta say that. <laughs> now I'm like all kinds of you know. <laughs> It's so we funny. had a whole talk before she got. She was like, "I can't curse, right?" I was like, "No, I can't." I was. Struggling. She was like, "Okay, I'm gonna I'm work it out. I'm gonna work I'm it out." Good. You're doing great. You're doing great. You're doing great. Yeah. I told you when you got to my house, you wouldn't struggle with cursing. The Lord has there's, blessed. There's, there's no, you know, in your home. You just come here and you feel the presence of the Lord, and you just no. And I'm here for it. <laughs> Listen, follow me throughout all the pieces of my life. Lord, please don't. Listen, leave. here's the thing. The beautiful thing about about our journeys, because I know you, you know, you have your relationship with God and your spiritual journey is. God really does meet us where we are. He Facts. loves us too much to let us stay there. Facts. But he's patient with us as he pulls us up. Yeah. Right? Like, I really do love that. And it's so funny because I think sometimes Christians get weird about certain things. Like, oh, well, you have somebody that does this or does that. And I'm like, um, so everybody sins. <laughs> you know? And everybody. Everybody. everybody has things. So if that's the case, I wouldn't even be able to sit on this couch myself. <laughs> We Let's were, talk about like it. We were disqualifying. Yeah, <laughs> everybody's out of here. Everybody yeah. going to hell. Yeah. Yes, like so, everybody. Yeah, so grace is important, but I I, I appreciate your um you holding back. <laughs> Girl, you know what you know uh, it. It's, it's yeah. literally the first question she asked me when I asked her to be a Because I knew it. I knew it was she coming. She was like, uh, so let me, yeah. So I can't curse. I was like, yeah, no. You can't. All right, it's cool. Um, but I, I love that my audience gets to hear from someone who is doing so many different things. And you talked earlier about just really trying to um, make sure that you make room for the next generation and be a role model for the next generation and things like that. When it comes to your music, right, and you have this you know, kind of like a a, a, a battle, right? Because you're like, I don't want to say that and I don't want to call myself that. And you, you have this, how do you balance, you know, representing the streets that we're from because I'm from the hood too, you know, um, we're also not losing the parts of you that are softer and that are more vulnerable and that do talk about your losses and things that you've been through in your life. How do you balance those two sides of yourself and your music? 
That is such a great, you have some really great questions. You really got me out here thinking, because I'm like, uh, I don't know. <laughs> I just be out here shining. Like, um, honestly, I, I, again, being vulnerable with yourself and being honest with yourself. And somebody said to me that when I really got into this music, that you have to separate yourself from your artist self. Mm. And there's Tiana Denise, and then there's Tiana whatever my last name is. <laughs> I don't want y'all using my credit. Yeah, right, right, right. All, all $10 of credit <laughs> I have. Um, but it, you have to separate yourself yeah. because what happens a lot of times is people get so immersed in that character that they lose themselves. Mm-hmm. And I've seen it happen. We've seen it happen yeah. to a lot of our favorite artists yep. that they get lost in that and they get lost in that music world. Yeah. And it's important to me to have those moments where I'm just Tiana. Yeah. Like those moments where like literally yesterday after yeah. we left the thing, uh-huh. I went home. Yeah. And I did not move from my <laughs> co- I was watching Criminal Minds, learning how to kill folks. <laughs> and I was cool. Yeah. And, and, and you have to have And there was a moments. lot to do in the city yesterday. It was too much to yeah. do in the city. I was supposed yeah. to go to a party. Listen, I took yeah. a nap and that nap took me. And it ended up being a slumber. <laughs> and that was it. Yeah. And you and I allow my body to do that. Mm-hmm. I allow myself to take my breaks yeah. when I need them. Yeah. Because if you don't sit yourself down, your body, body will, will make you. Down. you it'll yeah. be like, oh, word. You, you yeah. had something you thought you was doing today? Yeah. Oh, yeah, no, you're not yeah. doing that. Yeah, you're not doing that. And then it's, it's a whole world, yeah. as my grandmother would yeah. say, oh, you're in a whole world of trouble. So it's like... You have to separate yourself and you have yeah. to you have to allow yourself though those times where yeah. you need to just chill, where you yeah. need to just be by yourself. Yep. And I do that a lot. Yeah, that's important. You mentioned your grandmother. Yeah. And, um, I know you lost her a couple months back. Yeah. And I know you've lost your dad uh, in the past. Um, how do you navigate working through grief? And still working as much as you do. Because I feel like after Ooh. your grandmother passed, you didn't stop. Like, you stopped. I did. I did. But then you didn't. Right. Like, you, you stopped and then you was, I was like, oh, you're here. You have to submit. Okay. Like, you <laughs> know, like, why? You're back. Um, it was wild. So, yeah, how do you navigate that? So, when I lost my father, I was in a really, 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 really bad place. Financially, mentally. Um, even though I knew he was going to pass. And it was just a lot. And I worked right through it. Mm-hmm. I didn't take any breaks because I couldn't. I financially could not take any breaks. Mm-hmm. I had to get back home. I had to get back to work. Because yeah. if I didn't do that, I would have lost my job. Mm-hmm. And that sucks. Yeah. But it's the That's reality. That's so many people's reality. It's terrible. It's the reality. Yeah. I literally had the funeral and I had to come right back. Mm-hmm. And I was able to take like maybe that weekend. And mm-hmm. then it was we back in it. Yeah. And I had to work through it. And that was hard because I didn't grieve mm. the way that I needed to. Yeah. And that's when I first started therapy. So um, I was in Boston and we got a phone call that my grandmother wasn't doing well. Mm. And they were like, her body is basically shutting down. Mm. So when we went home to go check on her, um, <clears throat> she did like a complete 360. Mm. Like she was talking. Mm. She was, she remembered who I was. Mm. Like it was, we were like, oh, she's good. She just wanted us to come back home because she missed us. All right, cool. And literally like two, three weeks after that, she passed. Mm. So it was a little different with that. And it hit me a lot harder. Uh, But I took time off. I took time off from, from everything. And I think it was maybe like three or four weeks. Yeah, okay. Something like that. Well, I think it was like almost a month maybe mm-hmm. um, where, you know, I posted about her. I gave, you know, gave her her flowers, things mm-hmm. like that. And I just went dark for a mm-hmm. while because that one hit me a lot harder because I had the time to process it. Yeah. Uh, and then I slowly started moving myself back out mm-hmm. and doing things. Mm-hmm. I think I went to uh, an event over at Wish and that was like my first time outside. Mm-hmm in a while and then I just kind of like gradually started coming back Mm -hmm. and and doing things but grief is hard and when you lose people that are super close to you it never when you lose anybody it never goes away nope and you you have your days where you're just good like you're like life is great and then something triggers you and you think about them and you're just like okay so um this sucks. Yep. And it's a never ending cycle, but every day you get a little bit better yeah. with dealing with it. Yeah. And you never not think about them. It nope. just it's just you get better with dealing with it. Yeah. And sometimes you think about them and it's a happy thought. Sometimes you think about them and it just brings you down. Like yeah. You they give remind you that you're never gonna see them again. Yeah. And it takes you to a place. No, that's so, facts. So I could totally relate to that. Um, you have a tattoo on your hand that says faith. One of them. Um, how does your faith 
play a role into the many different things that you do. Yeah, that's everything. Yeah. Um, I was saying this to myself early when I was practicing because see, I practice in the mirror. <laughs> I'm like, she could ask me this. That's why you're such a great host and moderator. That could be hey, it. Because I'm, I'm an overthinker, so yeah. I go above and beyond. Yeah. So then I'll be always ready. Yeah. Um, but when I was thinking about, so Faith is actually my newest tattoo that I just got a few months ago. And I put this here as a constant reminder to have faith mm. and to trust God's direction. Mm -hmm. And every time, like, life has life. When you pick, a, so you have two choices in life, right? You can pick the regular route. Get a job, do your thing, have kids, whatever. Yeah. Right. And then you have the path of the dreamer, and mm -hmm. you have the path that is of least <laughs> the of most resistance. Yeah, of most resistance. Okay, yeah. least resistance, most resistance. And uh, and I Lord. feel like <laughs> when you start working in that, when you start moving over in this way, it is so freaking hard. Yeah. It is so hard. Yes. And it's almost like God is testing you, like, do you really want this? Yeah. Do you really want this? Do you really have what it takes yeah. to get to the next level? Because mm -hmm. every persevere? yes, will you persevere? And you, you know, along the way, you have pit stops and you have moments where you feel like, okay, look, I'm tired. I can't do this no more. And whenever, and I've had a lot of those moments, especially lately. And I look right here. Mm. And I'm like, do you really have what it takes? Mm -hmm. Is this what you really want? Yeah. And if this is what you really want, then you gotta keep going mm -hmm. because going back there, what's back there? Yeah, mediocrity, mm -hmm. right? What's back there? Nothing. There's nothing back there that I want. Yeah, everything I want is over here. Yeah, and if I can make it over here, I, me personally, I feel like God will never embarrass me. Yeah. Now Ooh, he may humble good. me. Now he might humble me, God. and he might he might be like, I'm gonna need you to sit down. <laughs> I need to show yeah. you something. And then I tell you to sit down before now. <laughs> sit down. Like, <laughs> but he's never yeah. going to embarrass me to the fact like I, I made a mistake by mm -hmm. pursuing this. Like I really messed up. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like yeah. he's not going to do that. And it's like if he takes something or what I've learned is that if he takes something away from me, he's either going to replace it with mm -hmm. something better or he's going to give me another direction. Yep. And I've learned that and I have to lean into that, yes. especially in my moments where I feel like, what, what is happening? Yes. <laughs> like, and yeah. he always will send you a sign. Yeah. Like I remember I was doing like, and it's so random. Like I'll, I'll just have, I'll be in a, in a funk. Mm -hmm. I didn't get a campaign or mm -hmm. something happened or with my music or whatever it is. And somebody will tweet me and be like, I'm so proud of you. Mm -hmm. You're so dope. Or somebody will send you something or like, just anything will yeah. happen. And I'm like, okay, I knew that was you. Yeah. All right, I'm, I'm on the right path. Yeah. Every time, every single time he, he reaffirms me and my purpose, yeah. every single time. So it's like, I can't go back. I gotta yeah. keep going. Like yeah. there has to be something on the other side. Like, like when Moses and all the Israelites mm -hmm. went through yes, the, Red sea, the yeah. Red sea, like they didn't know what was on the other you side. You preach. Like, <laughs> pass the tea, I am now past that. But it's true. Like. Yeah. It, they didn't know what was on the other yeah. side. They didn't know if the sea was going to oh, collapse. They were all mm -hmm. just going to peace out. Yeah, right. They didn't know. Mm -hmm. They just was like, you know what? Whatever is going this way is has got to be better than what's back there. It has to be. Preach. So that is how I am, I am living my life right Love now. That. And I don't know what's on the other side, mm -hmm. but... YOLO, yeah. Yeah. we out here. I love that. You know, my mom always drummed into our heads growing up. Faith is being sure of what you hope for and certain of what you do not see. Mm. Um, and other versions of the Bible talk about, you know, the evidence of unseen. And I think about being sure of what you hope for. You know, the dreamer, the entrepreneur, the artist, the creative, that's all we got is being sure of what we hope for and then certain of what we do not see. You know, you heard people talk about, oh, you got to be a little delusional. That is, have to. faith is delusional. It is. There's no reason Listen, that Jesus, fear, like thing. Jesus got on a cross and really believed he was going to rise again. There was nothing in that situation that pointed to the fact that he would actually rise again, except the faith that he trusted he what going, God said. Yeah. And so I often think about that too, as a creative, you know, it takes so much faith to do what we do. Um, to show up so many times creatives show up and give their all without a dime <laughs> be in their pocket you know <laughs> it, it, you know the bank account is looking crazy but you here you trying to perform you on the stage yeah. you at the studio you know just trying to make it happen but then when you hear those stories 
you know, I remember hearing St- Stacey Barth talk about how when she went and wrote, I don't want to mess up the song, but there was a song for Rihanna that she was talking about how she had like $5 in her account when she was in the studio writing that song, sure. you know, or, <laughs> you know, it's like, and, and this, these songs will change your life. But in the moment, you don't know that. You don't know that. You and just, so to yeah, really have the faith to keep going, um, especially in the music industry, which I feel like is the hardest industry in the world. Sure. <laughs> just personally it's, and it's hard and it doesn't have to be but yeah. it is yeah and i was thinking about this too listen i've been practicing child. <laughs> so why why i do all these things yeah right i had a con this is when i was living i was living in harlem mm-hmm. and my friend was like i want you to meet this a&r mm-hmm. and i'm like all right cool i'm ready i think i'm ready i think i'm dope okay mm-hmm. yeah i play my music for him the first thing he says is okay so what makes you different from every other cute black girl I, I was, and here goes my, me and my young mind. I was like, what you mean cute? I'm fine. <laughs> right? And at the time, I didn't understand it. But when I sat back, maybe a couple days later, and I sat and I thought introspectively, I was just like, what does make me different? Why would somebody want to listen to my music mm-hmm. and not this person? Why would mm-hmm. somebody want to be a fan of Tiana mm-hmm. and not a fan of whomever? Mm-hmm. Um, which you can be a fan of both, right? Mm-hmm. But in my mind, I'm like, what is it that sets me apart? Yeah. And this is before I understood branding. Mm-hmm. And, I, and I understood like what it means to, to build a brand and to build a community. Yeah. And I just started thinking about all of the things that I'm good at. Mm-hmm. All of the things that I do, I started getting a better understanding of my personal style mm-hmm. and what that means, how I need to evolve uh, to give somebody something to believe in mm-hmm. and to want to be a part of. And I just started, I was like, you know what? I'm about to just do everything. Yeah. Like if I, if I like sneakers, I'm just going to start posting them. Yep. If I like hosting and I like talking to people, I'm just going to start doing it. Yep. And I just started adding all the things that I love. I just started making something into it that people could believe in. Yeah. And that's how you build a brand Mm -hmm. really. Uh, and, and that's where all this comes from and yeah. why I do it is to prove that a and R like, yeah, there's a lot the, more to this cute yeah. black girl yeah. player. <laughs> yeah. I'm a Leo too. So, <laughs> you know. Oh, y'all some arrogant folks. <laughs> Can't tell y'all. Well, we, we are, but we're so nice though. No, yeah, my sister's we're a Leo. We're genuine. And I always like, say we are genuine, but yes. we are competitive yes. as heck. Yes. Like, see, I said heck. Yeah. You know, I was yeah. <laughs> But we are competitive. And yeah. it's like, you can't tell me no. Like, yeah. Yeah. no. Yeah. That lights y'all up. That lights y'all yeah. up. You might as well just take the flame and just do like this. <laughs> it's over. Like, I'm going now. I got to prove you wrong. Yeah. I got to prove this person wrong. Back from, from the second grade. Two. Like, oh, you tricked me in third grade? Oh, player, it's on. Like, we, and, and that's how yeah. I have to be the yeah. best version of myself at yeah. all times. No, like, I love that. I love to. that. I think that, you know, too, with the whole multi hyphenate and doing multiple things, one of the things I find is when I lean too much into one side of myself and neglect the other side, I'm very unhappy. You know, yeah. I wish I could just pick one thing, just just one thing, and just do that one thing and nothing. Else. And there's some but that and, do and, that. and there are seasons where I can. Like I yeah. feel like I'm heavy in the media hosting season of my life right yeah, now. Yeah, as you should. But I know that eventually I'm going to want to make a song. <laughs> like I know that eventually, you know, there's just going to be other things that I want to do. And so I think it's so important to do whatever God has put on your heart to do, he will show you what's supposed to be at the forefront. God is very, very serious about how he wants to use you at any given time. Yeah, so when nice. he wants to use you to be in music, he's going to use you for that music. Yeah. He's going to start making everything other than the music not work. Yeah. He's going to start making everything other than the music slow down. Yeah. You know, and then when he wants to use you for something else, he's going to use you for that and start making everything else slow down. Yeah. And so it's really super important that, you know, we don't we don't stifle ourselves. Yeah. But we allow God to, like, show us yeah. what we're supposed to do. So um, tell us, is there anything you got coming up, anything on the horizon that you want us to know, tell the people where to find you, all that good stuff. Man, I'm cooking. I'm cooking. <laughs> I'm just waiting for it to come out the oven. Yeah, like, I'm nice. cooking. I have so many irons. Like, I'm just waiting. Like, a lot of stuff I can't talk about right now yeah. because it's still kind of up in the air. Yeah. But Should we have a contracts and all that stuff, Chad? <laughs> Sign one the other day. Uh, but 
one thing I know for sure that is coming soon is new music. Yes. And I've been waiting forever. I've been working on this project for about a year, mm-hmm. off and on for maybe two years, mm-hmm. actually. I've been working on the project. It's called Love is the First Drug. Yes. But I'm calling it Love is the First just because some people might feel weird about drugs. Yes. Yes. But when we talk <laughs> about drugs, we talk about addiction, we're mm-hmm. using it as love Mm. is that one thing that drives because i feel like love is probably like one of the most powerful things in the world oh yeah the most powerful for sure and when we talk about things that we love it could be another person Mm -hmm. it could be money it could be in if Mm -hmm. you look at the 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 cover of my album Mm -hmm. it has all those different things that people Mm -hmm. can be in love with but I'm talking about little love, <laughs> like boyfriend, girlfriend, romantic. Oh, well, I didn't even get in your business. I meant to get in your <laughs> business in this interview. God knew what to do. No, no, no. <laughs> Let's go there real quick, real quick, real quick. <laughs> so, yeah. you know, you are a, a woman of a certain status, you know, in a male-dominated world, the sneaker world and the music world. Um, guys see you running around with Griselda, see you, you know, working with a brand like Nike and doing different things. Um, how does that impact your dating slash love life? My what? My, my who? <laughs> my dating what? Um, <laughs> phone dry like the Sahara chat. No, but honestly, like, um, I, I said this years ago. It's going to take a very special person to want to be with somebody like me. Mm-hmm. And vice versa. Like, I'm looking for a very special man that would want that I want to be with that yeah. has things going on that is of a certain status and yeah. and di- dating is an interesting place now um and a lot of people don't they don't they're not looking for love they're looking for help mm. and explain and this is goes for men and women so I'm not yeah. even trying to start nothing I'm gonna talk about the chicks I'm gonna talk about the mints <laughs> both of y'all messed up <laughs> so there's a lot of people that are looking for assistance like they're looking for assistance in whether it's mental Things. They're looking for someone to be their mama. They're looking for somebody to be their somebody father to live that they with. never had. They're looking for financial assistance. They're looking for a roommate. They're looking for someone to split these bills 50-50. They're looking for someone to buy them everything. We rebuke 50-50 on this show. We rebuke that. <laughs> Listen, I'm at a point no, where... No, no, no. I'm just playing. Do what works <laughs> for your household. That's how Please. I feel. Please do what works 1, for your household. percent Like, when people start talking about that, I'm like, yo, I don't care. Yeah, I don't care either for real. I'm just playing. <laughs> If you, if 50, 50, 20, 30, 10 yeah, and 10. Yeah, do what you got to do. I don't care. If I rebuke happy, it in my life in listen, the name of Jesus. And if that's what works for you, <laughs> but, like, I'm here yeah. for it, sis. Like, I'm yeah. here for it. Because yeah, if yeah, you yeah. are happy and yes. the other person that you're in a relationship with is happy, yeah. that's all that matters. And so many people want to get yeah. into, like, your business of your relationship. No, it's like, true. And then want to tell, you want to tell your business and your relationship. No. Yeah. Yeah. Some things are private and yes. it's between you and the other person. And it's how, what works for y'all and what makes And what happy. works for you in that season. Because you might be in a season where you do have to do 50 50 or 20 80 it, or whatever. It's cyclical and you it's never true. know. And you don't, you, you don't. Never it's true. Know. It's true. I've been in, I've been there. Yeah. Like, you know, I had a whole fiance. Yeah. I had a did whole. You? Yes. Ooh. I did. And as you can see, I don't need more. <laughs> so that was quick. Oh, when when <laughs> did that happen? This was years ago. Uh-huh. This was years ago. I was you in New York. You was young. You was a baby girl. Uh, slightly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I was living in New York. You know, he's okay. he's a Harlem guy, whatever. Oh, oh Lord. Yeah. We learned. <laughs> We learn y'all Harlem. Let me stuff. not talk about Harlem because I love Harlem. I Listen, went to high school love, and college I in Harlem. I love Harlem, man. Child. Like, stop playing with me. Like, y'all yeah. fly. The Harlem guys think they're prettier than you. That's the problem. Yeah, we all in the bathroom yeah. together. Yeah, I'm yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. I need the spray. <laughs> but it's, it's, I, I, it didn't work out. Uh-huh. Uh, some things happened that I couldn't come back from. Mm-hmm. And I think at the root of it, it was a lot of communication breakdowns, things like that, yeah. that caused. And that happens when we're young too. We just we weren't young. No, no, he wasn't young. Okay, he was older than me. Okay, but he he knew better. Gotcha. But people to stay to stay in a relationship and to stay faithful in a relationship is a choice. Yes, and it is a choice that you make. Yep. Can't keep no man that don't want to be kept. Exactly, and it's not even you know it's about it's not about what you do. It's about how you do things. Mm -hmm. It's not about what you say. It's about how you say it. And unfortunately, we couldn't come back from from mm, that. Certain things, yeah. Yeah. So great guy, yeah. great guy. I have nothing against him at right. all. Like I wish him all the best. I think mm. he's a great person. Uh, we just didn't work. Yeah. So you know, has that colored your trust? Not the relationship itself, but the whole process of breaking off of breaking off an engagement. Then I'm guessing since that time you kind of glowed up and risen in popularity. And now you're meeting guys who are weird about certain things or maybe don't have that level of confidence that you're used to guys having, especially dealing with guys from New York. 
Cosmic uh, love. Yeah. I love it. Yeah, yeah. You know, I prayed for God to give me a man from Brooklyn. Yeah. He did. Come because on. I'm like, I on, need BK. a certain kind of person. You do, and he so, knows yeah. that. So, yeah. But how, how does that color just your feelings about relationships? I had to forgive him in order to be able to move on. Mm. I had to forgive him. I had to forgive myself because it's not, I can't 100% say it was all his fault. Yeah. Right? Like, I played a partner. We were mm. in a relationship together. Mm-hmm. And I was I was all in. I had a yeah. little book. I had, yeah. I'm going to get this trust. <laughs> I like these shoes. Yeah. Like, all that. You know what I mean? But I had to forgive him for that. Yeah. I had to move on. And, and I try not to let what happened to me in the past, like, rule my next relationship. Yeah. Like, what it did teach me, though, is red flags. Mm. and to pay attention and not just from that situation other relationships i've had yeah. after that yeah. subsequently after like i pay attention to red flags now more yeah. than i ever have and before like i'm i could be real i've stayed in relationships a lot longer than i needed to mm-hmm. because i was afraid to be alone mm. because i wanted this to work yeah and i wanted to be like that ride or die listen we're not riding or dying no, dying together no, it's not no. happening we're not dying i'm good <laughs> we're gonna ride like homegirl said where we riding to yeah where, where, we, going? where we going and why we gotta die why we gotta die yeah. like i don't want none of that yeah like, we can ride out, but yeah. drop me off like, <laughs> before you go do some, yeah. some craziness. Get me out of here. But the beautiful thing about going through these things with love as an artist is that it informs your artistry. Facts. You get to have a depth of emotion. Um, you know, you ever seen the movie Five Heartbeats? Yes. It's one of my favorites. And in the beginning of the movie, Robert Townsend, shout out to Robert Townsend, black royalty love in him. Hollywood. Uh, his character, some somebody writes him a letter. I want to say it was a journalist. Somebody wrote him a letter and said, you will be a better songwriter when you suffer more. Mm. I always think about that. that true, as a minister, though. as a writer, as a creative. You know, it's unfortunate. But it's true. But the depth of our creativity and the way that it grows when we suffer um, really does allow us to, I think it allows us to tap into the human experience better. Yes. And so we, we grow in our ability to connect to people Yep. Absolutely. because now we've experienced another level of emotion yep. that more people have experienced. Listen, so, heartbreak is the best teacher that you will ever come across. Yeah. And heartbreak comes in many, many yes. fashions, heartbreak with family, heartbreak with a love interest. Yeah heartbreak with friends like i don't i don't care what nobody say when you lose a friend a friend breakup that hurting, is boy. hard like yeah. you lose me my best friend yeah. and even when my ex-fiance and i broke up that the hardest part wasn't the fact that you know whatever happened it was the fact that now i don't have this best friend anymore yeah like me and him was on the phone like mm-hmm. we were texting we had our little secrets mm-hmm. our little laughy jokes and things like and now i don't have those mm-hmm. anymore and it's like dang now now what do i do yeah now who do i call yeah. and honestly i called my dad yeah and that's who helped me move through that so i called yeah. him at like two o'clock in the morning crying like yeah. i can't believe and he's just like if yeah. i wasn't sick i'd yeah. mess him up <laughs> i'm like i know but when i went through my first big breakup as an adult that is how my dad and i got close because I told my dad, you know, my dad was all, oh, he wasn't worth it. Blah, blah, blah. And yeah. I was like, you know, this is not the first man to break my heart. You, you are the first man <laughs> that broke my heart. Ooh. And my dad was like. <laughs> Say what? And we had to have a real talk about mm-hmm. what his, I won't say absence, because my dad definitely wasn't absent from my life. But he wasn't in the home with us. And we had to have a real conversation. I was 27 yeah. years old. Yeah. We had to have a real conversation about what that did to me. What that made me feel like. I felt like I wasn't important to you. I wondered if I was important to you and all this stuff. I had things I had never said to my dad. Mm. And probably would have never said had, had, I, had I not gone through that breakup. So tell you. it'll do it. The Lord will do what he time. need to do to get you where you need to He's be. He's like, okay, I yeah. got you. Hold, yeah. Watch this. Yeah, yeah. And Absolutely. Like, oh, dang. <laughs> Absolutely. Got me. Well, I'm glad that we got to have that conversation. We might splice that up and put that somewhere else in the interview. But <laughs> I definitely wanted to get into your business. <laughs> I love life. It's an interesting place. <laughs> yes. My love life yes. is a very interesting yes. place. Like I've had guys take a look at my Instagram and see the things that I do and they and they stop talking to me. Yeah. I was just like, oh well, have a good day. <laughs> right. I, thought you I cool. still want to keep you on my page though, because we're not losing followers. <laughs> Stick around, it gets better. Um <laughs> so and I've just gotten to a point now where I just laugh about it. Yeah. Like it used to bother me, like, dang, what's wrong with me? Like, mm-hmm. is it me? Mm-hmm. Like, am I too ambitious enough? Or do I give off something? Like, what is that yeah and i had to get to a place where i'm like yo it's not like as long as you're doing what what you're supposed to do as a as a woman as a person yeah like you can't let them fall off let the chips fall where they may and let me tell you yeah you have to let them fall you have to because if i would have held on to some of the jokers in my past and not met my husband 
when I got to them pearly gates and God showed me what my life could have been, I'd have been so mad. <laughs> I'd have been so mad. I had to drink water. And so you really do have to let no, it's true. the people who are not supposed to be in your life fall off. Let them go. Um, because God just, he just knows. He knows who you're going to be 10 years from now. Yeah. And the type of spouse and type of partner you're going to need. Yeah at that time and so letting you know whoever's not for you um you said you know is it me am i too ambitious or am i this or do i give something off the answer is yes yes you do give something off yes you're probably too ambitious for some people Facts. yes you're whatever but those are just not your people and not that's me. more than romantic that's friends that's co-workers that's you know business assistants partners. business partners that's you know? <laughs> All of that. It's, it's it, true. You just got to let it go because God really does know what you need. And real um, talk, sometimes you have to let it go so then the other person can go through what they need to go through and then they can come back. Yes. And not, I'm not saying like Ashanti and Nelly type come back. <laughs> that, that is like epic, bro. Yeah, that is beautiful. Like, it's so, beautiful to I see. I love them. It's beautiful. Like I never was, yeah. I, was a, I was a Nelly Ashanti fan, yeah. but not like together. Yeah. It was kind of like, oh, I like this. Yeah. Ashanti. Okay, yeah. Now I'm just vested. It's beautiful. I love them. It is very I, cute. I the person watch. holding up the sign like can i come to the wedding because i love y'all but i'm saying just in friendships too yeah. like sometimes you have to let people go so then you can grow and, yeah, they, and can they can grow, grow and then we can come back together yes, at a I've different time happen. i've had that happen Me too. too and it's beautiful and it's, it's beautiful. beautiful you go from thinking like i don't know if me and this person will ever be the same to it being better than it used to be mm -hmm. yeah. um and i've had i've experienced yeah. that and even well. with there's certain relationships with men yeah that we didn't work out as like maybe we went out on a date or yeah. something like that and it's like yo we're so much better yeah. as friends you're supposed to be friends we're yeah. supposed to be I don't want to yeah. kiss you yeah. you're my brother <laughs> like we're supposed to be friends and it just works out yeah. that way and yeah. it's, it's so funny how God does that yeah absolutely I love that listen in the grand scheme of things what do you want your legacy to be my legacy I would want my legacy to be that I never gave up and I tried everything. Mm. And if I can do it, you know, if I can do it, I'm this tall, <laughs> fat girl from Buffalo, New York, that you never fit in anywhere. Mm. Like, I never really fit in anywhere. I was mm. too black for the white people, and I was too white for the black people. <laughs> and I'm like, well, then what you want me to do? <laughs> I, just, I just put the period at the end of the sentence. <laughs> like, why? Why is that so hard yeah. for y'all? And if I can do that, and if I can get to whatever the height that God wants me to get to, I don't know how much time I have on this earth. If it's two years, two weeks, 20 years, whatever. But I want at the end of my life to be like, I tried everything mm -hmm. and I did everything mm -hmm. to the best of my ability. 100% I went hard yeah. and I gave somebody else the tools to do the same. Mm -hmm. And because again, I'm not doing this for me, yeah. yeah, it is for me on some level, right? But it's for that person. It's yeah. for that other little girl that's like me, that's kind of awkward, but has a dream and that wants to do something and yeah. they see it and now they can see it through me and yeah. now they can do that same thing. So I love that it. answer. I love that. I was off the top. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. I really do appreciate the vulnerability, the truth. <laughs> Listen, guys, that has been another episode of I'll Just Let Myself In with Lish Speaks. Y'all know the drill. Y'all know where to find us. We are on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube. Please like, subscribe, share, give us a review. Tell a friend to tell a friend that you are loving what we're doing here at I'll Just Let Myself In. And as you know, we'll be here next week, same time, same place. It's your girl, Lish Speaks. Peace. Yeah, I might have a great day.